So we're all looking for the best exercise for bone health and longevity. Resistance training and impact training, I talk about a lot, and this isn't going to change my opinion on those two things. But I've been getting a lot of questions around grip strength. So grip strength is a predictor of overall health. It is linked to lots of good health outcomes. But does that mean that we should be doing grip strength exercises? Is this the answer to longevity? In this video, I wanna talk about grip strength. I wanna talk about what it means, what's expected. Uh, what the REACH shirt shows is a good thing to do from a grip strength perspective, or actually just from an exercise perspective. And I wanna talk about is the you know, grip strength exercises, is this something we should really be focusing on? Or is this just a proxy biomarker for other forms of strength? So stick around if you wanna optimize your exercise program. All right, so before I get into the research, let me just say that I do hear over and over again, this discussion of grip strength and longevity, that grip strength and VO2 max are the two best indicators of longevity or, or living a long time. I'm not gonna say that I disagree with that at all, but let me walk you through the literature so that you can understand where this is coming from. So the first study I wanna talk about is called the PURE study. And this is a large scale study with over 139,000 participants from 17 countries. So there's a lot of people, and these are all associations, as you would imagine. This is not a 140,000 person uh, intervention with grip strength. But you can see that people that had lower grip strength, so the opposite of good grip strength, but lower grip strength had an association with higher risks of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, myocardial infarction, that's heart attack, and stroke. Grip strength was a better predictor of mortality than even a well-known sign of disease like blood pressure. So the implication then is that grip strength or weak grip strength is strongly associated with bad outcomes, ways of dying, shorter longevity, and therefore you might think, hey, I wanna increase my grip strength. But wait, it gets worse. So this next study is on what's called normalized grip strength. And so this is a study comparing US adults to Chinese adults, and they're looking at grip strength and body mass. The key results here are that lower normalized grip strength, or NGS, was associated with a higher odds of having diabetes, hyperglycemia, that's also diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia, also related to diabetes, low HDL cholesterol, hypertension, and physical disability. Meaning that, according to these authors, maintaining muscle strength is critical to fending off what is essentially a long list of metabolic dysfunction, lipid dysfunction, blood pressure, which is a lot of times related to metabolic dysfunction, and physical disability, which can often come from metabolic dysfunction. So really what they're tying here is that grip strength, poor grip strength is associated with metabolic dysfunction, which makes sense because it's associated with a loss of muscle mass, and that's what they were finding here. Now, this next study is looking at cardiometabolic multimorbidity, or CM. Now, I actually don't know what the definition of that is, but I think we can say that cardiometabolic, heart, metabolism, multimorbidity, that's disease, sounds bad, right? So CM, they're looking at CM, and this is a study involving almost a half a million participants from the UK Biobank. So this is kind of a cool association study because it's just massive. Lower hand grip strength is what they call it. Lower hand grip strength was associated with a higher risk of developing CM. Kind of makes sense. The lowest grip strength had a 46% higher risk of developing CM. So it just goes to show you that it's, I don't know that it's linear, but the worse it is, so grip strength is. And then they broke it down from there to say that the risk of type 2 diabetes was 35% higher, stroke 23% higher, coronary heart disease 23% higher. Overall, there was a 57% higher risk of all-cause mortality among those with the lowest grip strength. It's a pretty big deal. All right, so what about brain health? We're gonna hit all of the biggest causes of death, right? So cardiovascular disease, dementia. The only thing we haven't talked about is osteoporosis and cancer, but don't worry, we'll get there. So this is a study on brain health. And so in this study, what they looked at is that grip strength is a marker of brain health and that they associated the integrity of the neural systems controlling movement with grip strength, meaning that the better your grip strength, the better the wiring was between your brain and your muscles. Okay, and this last study finally is on osteoporosis. And I think this one's important because people with osteoporosis are obviously worried about fracture. They're worried about their quality of life. And that's exactly what this study looked at. So osteoporosis patients with weak grip strength had much lower quality of life scores. In fact, you could 
actually calculate this, they had 2.68 times. So they were actually about two and a half times more likely to experience impaired mobility compared to those that had quote unquote normal or not weak grip strength according to that group. So I think that's enough research, right? So we can see this clear association between grip strength and mortality and disease. So then what do we do about that? What do we do with this information? And this is where I see a disconnect between certain recommendations that are out there to say like, you're absolutely right. Oh my gosh, it's so clear. Let's go out and let's buy squeeze balls and let's buy the little like, you know, guitar hand strengthening things. Let's put rubber bands on my wrist so I can do this all day long. I got to improve my grip strength. Maybe. I haven't seen a single intervention study that actually shows that grip strength by itself is going to have an impact. There is actually a bone health study out there that I reviewed, but it was grip strength in conjunction with other exercises. So grip strength by itself, I don't think is going to have a significant impact on your longevity and mortality, but doing exercises that are going to build your muscle mass, improve your metabolic health, that will ultimately increase the functional strength of your grip is important. So some recommendations out there would be to do things like a farmer's carry. Now, before I get into these, let me just say too, if you're doing some of the stuff that we were talking about, if you're doing traditional you know, barbell weightlifting, you're working on your grip strength because it is hard to hold on to some of those things, especially when you start doing high intensity resistance training. If you haven't looked at our videos on resistance training, please do that, but do it safely. And so you're already getting there, but what about some extra stuff? So things called walk farmers carry. So farmers carry, you know, basically carrying like, you know, imagine you were carrying around an 80 pound sack of feed, you know, so you're basically gonna carry like a dumbbell or a weight and you're gonna carry it for as long as you can. It's hard on the body because you're, you know, it's off of your center, you're moving, you're really working your spine and you're holding onto it with this hand. And so this has been a part of my workout, not all the time, but occasionally we're doing, you know, 80 pound, you know, farmers carries one-sided, two-sided. There's a ton of different ways to do it, but these are simple, easy things to do. And you don't even have to do it with dumbbells. You could actually do it with something heavy and you could actually carry around. So like dog food, right? So these functional things make a big difference. Doing things called dead hangs. So literally just holding onto a bar, hanging your body weight from a bar, please be careful. But that kind of exercise is going to really improve grip strength. Outside of that, I don't see a strong need to use like squeeze balls and grip strengtheners, resistance band for the fingers. I don't think that that is actually fixing the problem. It's sort of extrapolating the idea that having good grip strength is good. So doing finger exercises is going to result in that good thing. I think we see that mistake in the application of research all the time. And I don't think that we can actually just jump to that conclusion without showing that grip strength exercises is going to improve longevity. And I don't think we'll ever see that study done. So I think we need to focus on the things that are going to improve our muscle mass overall. All right. So in conclusion, grip strength is a surrogate for overall strength in health. If you think about who has a strong grip, it's people who lift heavy things, people who are active, people who can get anabolic, people who can build muscle, maintain muscle, people with optimized hormones, people with optimized metabolic health. Grip strength is going to be associated with longevity because of the things that cause it. The people that are doing all the things I just mentioned, those are the people that are going to have the best chance of an improved longevity, lifespan, and hopefully health span. So what do we actually need to change? Well, it depends on your starting point. The answer may be nothing. If again, if you're already doing resistance training, if you're already holding up barbells, you're doing high intensity resistance, you're probably doing enough. If you're not doing those things, I would focus on those things first. Maybe adding in things like dead hangs, farmers carry. Again, just carry your dog's you know, 40 pound bag of dog food around your house if you can do it safely. All of these things are gonna to help to improve your muscle mass overall and your grip strength. So I don't have a specific product to tell you to buy. I don't have anything that's like a, this thing. Uh, for those who are listening to this, I'm moving my hand back and forth because I just don't think you need it. I think this is a simple lifestyle thing. Improve your grip strength by lifting heavy stuff. That's it for today. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but choosing to reverse it is a beginning. If you're struggling to do that though, and you're looking for a community, please consider joining our HealthSpan Nation. Our HealthSpan Nation is our community where we have a weekly topic-driven Q&A. It is awesome. We have tons of people in the actual community page where they interact with each other, ask each other questions on specific topics, help support each other, can act as accountability. Uh, you can really get to know some amazing women and men in this group. So if you're looking for a community and you're tired of Facebook groups, you're tired of chasing your tail on the internet, 
Come join us at HealthSpan Nation. Look for the link in the description below or check us out at OptimallyHumanHealth.com.